Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Hareholtz. I'm the Training Manager at Turning Technologies. Welcome to the Turning Point slash Canvas Integration Tutorial. This tutorial will take you through the process of how students, first of all, register their response devices for their classes. Next, we'll take you into the Turning Point software and discuss what you as instructors will need to do to import participant lists from Canvas into the Turning Point software, how to update those participant lists and why we would need to do that, and then finally, how to export results back over to Canvas once we have run sessions. Let's go ahead and start with the student registration process. So in just a moment, you're going to see your screen change over to mine. And for the student registration process, let's go ahead and pull that up. And let me go ahead and reload this because I did this once before. And I want to load it one more time. So here we go. So the students, they're going to go to their clicker portal within Canvas. Once they are there, this is the exact page that they're going to see. From here, I can click on register your clicker as a student. And once I click on register the clicker, I will now load the Canvas registration tool. Once I load the Canvas registration tool, I can immediately go ahead and enter the device ID of my device. If I'm using a response card, that device ID can be found on the very back of the response card right below the barcode. So the barcode that I have on my response card and the device ID right below it reads 0E9, oh, case sensitive, so we got to make sure that we fit that in there, FFD. Now, it's very important that we do have six digits, and this is a hexadecimal, by the way, so a mixture of numbers and letters, and it is always going to be capitalized. Finally, as a student, I will make sure that I put in this CAPTCHA information that I see at the bottom. I'm not quite sure what that's reading, so let me go ahead and get a new CAPTCHA here. Uh, mm, <laughs> Sometimes these are tough to see. All right, so I think this one's a little bit better. Maybe. Click register device. Ah, very good. All right, so once I click on register device, it's going to tell me that I only need to register one time. And that's the great thing about this student registration tool is that as soon as I register a clicker for one class that I'm enrolled within, it automatically registers it for all of the other classes, which is fantastic. So even if I drop this class later on and add another class, that's okay. That registration code or that device ID will transfer over to that new class, and like I mentioned, it automatically registers the device ID for every single class I'm enrolled within for the semester. Fantastic tool for the student. Once they click on Final Submission, you can see that indeed it was successful. So that's the student process right there. Let's now go over and talk about your process as instructors. And there's actually three things that you're going to need to do. Number one, and first and foremost, is you'll need to import the participant list from Canvas in the turning points. Now the great thing about this is that you never technically need to go to Canvas. This is all going to be done from turning point. So when you open up the turning point software, you're going to notice in the upper left hand corner how you have three tabs, polling content and manage. To import that list in, we're going to click on the Manage tab. Once I click on Manage, now notice in the upper left-hand corner there's a drop-down for Participant List. I'll select this and then select New. Now I have two options here. I'm obviously not going to be creating it manually. I'm going to be downloading it from an integration and select Create List. From here, make sure from the drop-down you are selecting Canvas. You're putting in whatever your server URL is. I obviously have a demo account, so that's my server URL. Once I click Connect, my next step will be to put in my username and my password. Now, I only had to do it one time, and it bypasses that step. And, of course, I've already done it once before. But you will need to put in your username and password of however it is that you log into Canvas, Canvas that is, so the same credentials that you use. Once you do that, you'll click Login. And after you click Login, it's going to list every single course that you are teaching this semester. So all the courses are going to be listed right here. I obviously just have one. So if this is the only course I want to import in, I check mark it. I'm going to click Import, and that's the final process right there. It's going to tell me that Turning Point has successfully imported one participant list. So notice now in the upper left-hand corner that I actually have two of the same list because I've already imported it once before, and it says Clickers Turning Technologies. Now, any time that I click on this list, it's always going to give me a preview. So if you notice, I have approximately six people in my class, and only four of them have registered at least one device. 
Some of them have registered multiple devices, which is fine. You know, apparently they have four different devices. Maybe they're afraid they're going to lose three of them. But if you notice, Julie and Shiva have not yet registered. That's okay. I can still use this participant list, and Julie and Shiva can still participate in class with a response card or a response device, even if they're not registered. Now, eventually, Julie and Shiva will need to register that device that they're using in your class. And eventually, after they register, we will need to do something called update the participant list so we can get the valid data in terms of their response device ID within our list. <clears throat> now, the great thing about this is that I could technically be running presentations, collecting session data, exporting grades over to Canvas, even before Shiva and Julie in this situation have actually registered. As soon as they do register, and you subsequently update the list and re-export those sessions, Julie and Shiva will now have grades for those sessions they may have participated in four weeks ago. So the next thing that I would like to cover is how to update the participant list. Remember, you will have to do this at least one time in the semester. You have to update it because, as you know, students are not going to be registering all the time when you want them to. They're going to be registering week six, week seven, and if you import this before the add drop period, well, this list is going to look a lot different the next time you update it. So to update a participant list, it's actually going to be pretty much in the same place. We're going to click on the Manage tab. We're going to select the course that we want to update. Okay, so in my case, it would be Clickers Turning Technologies. Once I click on the course, now in the lower right-hand corner, there is a button which reads Results Manager. I will select this. When I click on Results Manager, I'm going to see my roster. Now I'm going to see any session files if I already ran sessions with them. And now I'm also going to see an integrations button in the upper left-hand corner. This is the only thing technically I have to worry about and click on integrations. When I click on integrations, that same old connect to integration screen will appear. Make sure you put in Canvas and your server URL. Click connect. It's a one-time deal for the username and password. That's why it bypasses it for me. And I can just click login. Once I click Login, it's going to give me two options here. Do I either want to update a participant list or do I want to export sessions back over to Canvas? For right now, I'm going to update. When I click on Update List at the bottom middle, this is now going to go ahead and automatically update the participant list so any students who were previously not registered in my list, or in other words, registered their clicker after I initially imported it, they will now have a device ID next to their name. Now, if they participated in the session that happened three weeks ago, and they weren't yet registered, but they were using that clicker, yes, there is going to be a device ID next to their name, but they're not going to all of a sudden get a grade back over in Canvas. I will need to re-export the session. The next thing I want to discuss is, first of all, how to export sessions in general. My recommendation, though, export every session every time, because you're going to have students who register late. And if they register late, they're never going to get a grade until they register, you update, and you re-export a session file or export it for the very first time. I hope that makes sense. So to get the grades back over to Canvas, it's still in the same place. It's still clicking on Manage, and I am once again going to click on the class that I want to export session files over to. If you notice, I ran a session and I saved it with this previously created participant list or previously imported. I am not, notice, going to be clicking on the session file. Because if I click on the session file, it doesn't say results manager in the lower right-hand corner. It instead reads reports. I don't want reports. I want results manager. So when I click on clickers turning technologies, select results manager, and one more time, I'm going to click on integrations. Click on integrations, put in the credentials, log in. And this time, instead of updating the list, I'm going to export sessions. So from here, it's asking me, which sessions do I want to export? And within those sessions, what is it that I want to export? Remember, if you run five sessions, you're going to see all five sessions here every time. I highly suggest that you checkmark and export every session every time. Like I said, that situation of students registering the clickers late, when they do that and you update it, they're not going to magically get a grade back in Canvas. You will need to re-export the session. Now, the great thing from your perspective is it's not going to create a brand new column back in Canvas. It's just going to give them a grade. So where previously they may have a dash next to their name, they're now going to have some type of score. 
So once we make the selection of what it is we want to export, click the export button. Turning Point is going to tell you what it will export back to Canvas. Click the export button, and ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the story there. It's going to eventually tell me that the export has been successful. It reads several minutes, but to be honest with you, it usually takes several seconds. There we go. And that's the final part of the process. Notice once again, we never actually went into Canvas, but now that I exported it back to Canvas, it's creating that additional grade column. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I have for you today. Uh, hopefully, you have a pretty firm understanding of how students register, what it takes to import a participant list, update, as well as export results. What I'd like to leave you with is a slide that has my contact information. So if you do have any questions regarding this in integration, I definitely urge you to go ahead and get in contact with me. And of course, my information is on the left-hand side of that slide. Otherwise, good luck this semester. I hope you enjoy this tool. Hope you enjoy the software. And if necessary, I look forward to speaking with you. Take care now.